Hello, hello, Yolanda Perry here at Yolanda Worldwide. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back. It is night four and we are ready for more. It's been an amazing, amazing three nights so far and it has been an incredible series. We are here. If you're joining us as a replay viewer and you missed any part of this, we are in the I Prosper seven day challenge. It has been a tremendous experience, the revelation that we are getting. If you missed any part of it, make sure you go back on the timeline and watch the replays. It has been absolutely incredible. I wanna say welcome tonight to those of you who are joining us live. I see you jumping on. As you jump on, go ahead and greet us in whatever way you do in your part of the world. Let us know where in the world you are joining us from, but more importantly, we want you to help us to share this broadcast. If you've been with us any part of this challenge, you already know it is a blessing to you. That's why you're back. So we wanna make sure that you don't come back alone each night. Go ahead and begin sharing, inviting the people on to join us. I'm gonna jump into just a little bit of a recap as we're getting ready, as you're letting people get into onto the broadcast tonight. On the first night, we were talking about mentors and protégés. And that was just, that particular night, so many people reached out and talked about how they were blessed by the revelation that came forth, the importance, how we are to treat our mentors, just the must knows about being in a mentor and mentee relationship. People are even asking questions about how do you find the right mentor? We're not gonna handle any of that tonight. We may get to tackle some of that before we end this series, but go back to that first night and watch and just take in the information that was given there. And then the second night we had Pastor Dave Williams. We call him Uncle Dave here now at Yolanda Worldwide. He is, did an incredible job breaking open to us the trichotomy of wealth. I'm not going to break that down. Go back and watch the replay. He dropped so many nuggets that night. It's still impacting so many. People are still gleaning from the lessons that we learned that night. And then last night, we got to talking a bit about the seed. We got to talking about what we do with the seed, investing where we want to go, which uh, I told you that the term upward sowing was coined by the O'Learys, which I'm excited <laughs> that they're still here with me, y'all. They didn't take off on me, so I think I'm doing pretty good. I think we're working this thing out together. But we were talking about the law of the seed last night, and we were talking about sowing where we want to go. And we're going to go into some other topics from chapter three and chapter four, the tithes and the alms. But we just thought there was so much more that that needs to be poured and needs to be shared uh, as far as the seed is concerned. So tonight we're actually going to start there and then we're going to go into tithing and talking about alms and different things. People have questions about different forms of giving. And we hope that by the end of this night, you're going to get so much revelation stories, different things to back what it is that we are sharing here tonight. But again, before I get ready to uh, invite them to speak, I want you to do your due diligence, share with the people, get them on tonight. We want everyone to be blessed by what we have going on tonight. And whatever you do, stick around. We have a huge, a humongous announcement to make tonight. And I'm so excited. I'm at the edge of my seats waiting to share it. And it is gonna be incredible. So you don't wanna miss what we're gonna share tonight. But I'm gonna let them into the conversation here. I just wanted to give that recap as we're having people come on. How are you guys? We're perfect. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm having the I'm having a time of I'm having the time of my life. I get to be in the house with them all week long and it's been amazing. They're thinking that they haven't done much and I'm like, you all don't know. I'm in, I am in, if the people know me, I'm in my happy place. I'm in my happy place. I like a place to relax and enjoy. It's been an amazing time here with you this week and I get to I get to like soak in what's happening in this house. So I get to soak it all in. So 
I have been in hog heaven, as they would call it down south. But I want to let you all into the conversations. You all have done an amazing job. I want to just say to you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this with me. Thank you for being willing to share. And I just want you to know that I appreciate you. I want to just take a moment right now <laughs> to tell you that I appreciate you too. And so as we're getting ready to, so my seat to you for this moment is encouragement to let you know that you are really impacting Yolanda worldwide in ways that you do not know. I believe I speak on behalf of all of the people that have been coming to Glean all week. You are really impacting us this week and I want you to know that. And so with that being said, we're gonna pull on you some more. <laughs> so love, You love her. Thank you. I she love said, someone so much. It's when fun, you just met them. It's fun to have around because when we get done with this, either before or when we get done, then we start talking about things that went on and, and iron sharp, sharpens iron. We have just great conversations with this That's lady. That's what we should be taping. That's right, is those, because those are just great conversations, because iron sharpens iron. And we just, I think it's been way more fun for us than it has oh, been for you. Oh, I don't know. We're making yeah. that, we're making that. She's worldwide, <laughs> we're only citywide. <laughs> <laughs> you're worldwide now, you're, you're at home, you're at home. But let's jump in, let's talk some more about upward sewing and, and different types of giving and different things. I wanna just let you guys just lead off in the way that you feel led to lead off tonight in the topic. Okay, so I was, you know, I was looking over my notes today and I know we didn't really get as much time with um, Upward Sewing as we did the other chapters. So I wanted to just talk about it a little bit more. And one thing I wanted to tell you is a story about, um, well, first of all, you know, Upward Sewing is, is another word for it is honor seed. And honor, the word means open the door. That's what the word honor means in Hebrew. It means open the door. And do you know the only one of the Ten Commandments that comes with a promise of a long and happy life is the one that says honor your mother and father. And so the way that you can honor your spiritual father is through upward sowing. And we give to our man of God every month. Hebrew means open the door. We... <laughs> We give to our man of God every month, and, and we give to traveling ministries when they come. We sow into them, and we honor them with our seed. And the word, um, you know, when God says, don't come to me empty-handed, the best way to come to him, the closest way, is by giving to your man of God. Mm. It's the most fertile ground. God put it right under your nose. Because you know why? He wanted to make it easy for you to prosper. He loves you. He loves you and he wants you to succeed. He wants you to prosper and be in health. He wants you to have every good thing and he put your best soil right under your nose. And I was just gonna tell you a couple stories from the Bible that illustrate how powerful it is giving to the man of God. So the first one is Elisha and um, the woman from Shunem. So every time Elijah would be in town, the woman from Shunem would give him a, a room in her house and she'd feed him, she'd treat him like a son. And then she said, I think I'll add a whole addition onto my house for him. And so that every time he comes to town, he has his own place to stay. And so she did that. And she kept just blessing him and honoring him until finally he couldn't sleep. And he said to his servant, go ask her, what did she want? Because do you know why? She didn't name her seed. Mm -hmm. She was sowing and sowing and she never named her seed. And you know, until she named her seed, she didn't get a harvest. So there's a couple things from the story, but one of them is name your seed. When you sow it, lay your hands on it and name it. And the other thing is your man of God can name your seed for you. Mm. So the woman from Shunem, Gehazi, asked her, what do you want? My master sent me. She said, I, my husband takes good care of me. Mm. And so Gehazi went back and he said, she wouldn't name her seed. But he said, you know, I know she doesn't have any children. Elijah said, next year at this time, go tell her. She'll have a son. Come on. So sure enough, the next year she got her son. And you know why that was her harvest? Because she treated Elijah like a son. Wow. You reap what you sow. <laughs> wow. She treated Elijah like a son, and she got her very own son. Wow. So then he was a little boy, and he said, oh, my head hurts, and he died. 
And she was like, oh, I have seed in the ground. I have a covenant with Elijah. Mm. I'm going to go get him. So she got on her horse and she just, anyone who asked her what's wrong, she was like, nothing, I'm fine. And she went. And then Elijah said to Gehazi, hey, Gehazi, here's my staff. Go back with the Shunammite woman, lay my staff on him, and bring him back to life. So Gehazi did that, but the child did not come back to life. Mm. So she went and got Elijah and said, you're, you're the one I have seed in the ground with. You're the one I have a covenant wow. of love with. Mm. You have to come. Mm. So Elijah came and he laid on the child and breathed and the child came back to life. Wow. So see how powerful that mm. seed has resurrection power in it. And it had resurrection power to lift her son up from the dead, just like it rose Jesus from the dead. Mm. And um, the power of a seed and that connection that you make to the anointed person, you have a right to pull on that anointing. Mm. And it's, um, there's another story too. So this story is about Mary and Martha and Lazarus. So, good. so this Mary, she's the same one that gave him the perfume for his feet. You know, the one we're still talking about 2,000 years later. Oh, that man. Mary. She, Lazarus died. So Martha went to Jesus and said, hey, Lazarus died. And Jesus said, well, do you believe I can raise him from the dead? Martha. And Martha said, yes, on the last day. And he looked at her and he said, go mm. get Mary, go get Mary. Mm. And so he went, she went and said, Mary, Jesus wants you. And so Mary went and the second he saw Mary, who had given him the perfume for his feet, she had seed in the ground, compassion. Compassion rose up and he said, Mary, take me to Lazarus. And for Mary, he did it. He didn't do it for Lazarus. Mm. If Mary hadn't have put the perfume on Jesus' feet, I don't think Lazarus would have had a right to be raised from the dead. Mm. That's resurrection power. The seed has resurrection power. Mm. It can raise your finances from the dead. It can raise your checkbook from the dead and your bank account from the dead. Come on. And your marriage. Come right? on. Okay, wow. so it's a covenant connector, and it's a very honoring thing to do. Do you know it's the most highest level of honor is to give to someone and say to them, I want to be like you. Mm. That's the most honoring thing you can do to man is want to emulate them. Mm. So an upward seed, another word for it is honor seed. So. You know the quickest way to shut the door to your destiny? Dishonor. Dishonor will slam the door of favor shut so fast. And you could see, you might even be able to think of a situation in your own life or when you were maybe a teenager, when you maybe did something dishonorable and it shut an opportunity down for you. Mm. I know I can. I have, um, I'll tell you this one story. I wasn't born again. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> and so bad. I wasn't born again, and I just started dating John, and he had this cottage up north, and I only had my kids. I didn't have my kids every other weekend, so there were two weekends out of the month I could go up north with him. Well, one of the weekends, my boss wanted to have the personal training meetings, and then I couldn't go up north. And I'm trying to rebuild my life, you know, with this gorgeous hunk of manhood. And so I said to him, I can't come to those meetings on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you have to come. They're mandatory. And I said, well, I will not be there. <laughs> and he said, then you will be fired. <laughs> and I said, fine, fire me then, because I won't be there. And then for the next few days, it was all tense in the office, you know. And um, I was like, Jody. So I got a card. Actually, he might have told me to do this. <laughs> I got a card and I said to Chris, I'm so sorry I dishonored you. I didn't mean a word of it. Of course, I'll be at the meeting. And I, I'm very sorry. And I'll do anything you say. 
I'm really sorry I caused you pain. And I love you, Judy. And so then I saw him in the hall after I'd put it in his mailbox. And I saw him and I went up and hugged him and I just felt every bit of bad feelings between us just melted away in that one moment. Mm. And I was so glad I undid my dishonor. Mm. And the next day I got a little note in my mailbox, everybody did. The personal training meetings have been moved to Thursday. Wow. And so, honor mm. opens the door. Honor. Yeah. So I just wow. wanted to talk about that and then um, let's see what else I have here. So I like this too that you see, it's a snapshot of your faith. So when you sow your seed and name it, you're like taking a picture in your mind of mm -hmm. what it's going to be. And you know, there's, I think it's Mark 4, 26, it said, um, so the seed falls to the ground into the soil and then the farmer sleeps. And whether he's asleep or awake, it doesn't even matter, the soil produces all by itself. Wow. That's the law of the seed. See, the soil does the work while you sleep, once you sow. And so I want you to do something for me. I want you to shut your eyes for a minute and picture mm -hmm. your life 10 years from now. Your financial mm -hmm. situation, where you live, mm -hmm. how you live. That's your future self. Mm -hmm. And your future self is depending on you to make the right decisions today so that your future self can reap the benefit. You can't wait until you're 70 to get your grind mm -hmm. on. You gotta do it now. So that when you're 70, you can reap the harvest and live off the harvest. So. It's, it's never ever too late mm -hmm. for no. God to produce a harvest no, for you. It, it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. And, and there's one other no. element. Sometimes no. there's, there's no. older people in the crowd and those of us that have grandchildren, like we do, we have an obligation for this. We have an obligation to yes. teach our grandchildren this, this thought process, this type of thinking. Right. Because we'll, we'll advance them. There's nothing that we can do that would advance them quicker than this yes. type of thinking. Yeah. So we have an obligation to understand it, practice it, learn it, and then pass it on. That's yeah. right. You want yeah. to talk about a legacy? Yeah. That's a legacy. Absolutely. And I, I feel like we are responsible we're responsible for what we're learning here this week. Yeah. Ooh. We are responsible for what we're learning here this week. I've said, we cannot unhear what we've heard this you week. You can't unknow it now. Can you can't you? unknow it. Yep. But you don't want to, do you? You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to. Yeah. And you know, one of the things I was thinking as you were talking, you know, about, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. What matters is where you're going. I think I said it earlier is if your eye your eyes are open it opened up this morning that means you have another opportunity yeah so you're not going to look at what has happened before everything that happened up you know pre 50 for me it doesn't matter i can learn from those things yes but it doesn't mean that 50 years is lost god's a redeemer of the time that's right in the blink of an eye. He's a redeemer of the time. That's right. So if we are intentional about taking what we know now and doing it from this day forward, just one breath of God on it That's can right. even es it can just accelerate. That's right. That's right. Everything that we never even got to do before. That's right. That's very exciting to think about, isn't it? If you don't make any changes and you see your future self in 10 years from now, it's gonna, you're gonna be right where you Absolutely. are today. You're gonna be no better off, but you're gonna be 10 years older. Absolutely. So it's the time is now. You know, there's this test that they do for little kids. They put them in a room with a two-way mirror and they, there's you know like three or four kids and they say, they give them each a marshmallow. Mm. And they say, don't eat the marshmallow because if you don't eat it, when we come back, we'll give you a whole bag of marshmallows. But if you eat it, then that's the only marshmallow you get. And so then they leave the room for a few minutes and they watch the kids do everything to try not to eat this marshmallow. <laughs> and so most of them eat it because they're little. 
and they don't really have future mind thinking, you know? But the one who doesn't gets the whole bag, and guess what the other kids say? That's not fair. That's not fair. See, the one who sows and gets the harvest, the people who don't want to sow think it isn't fair. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fair. It's fair. It's very it's fair. Long. So when I was um, a single parent and I was living in a new town in a 700 square foot apartment with my three kids and I was a student and I had no money and I had this little book. It's called The Hundred Things You Wished You Would Have Learned in Kindergarten. And one of them was goal setting. And in the goal setting, it said that if you write down your goals, you triple your chances of getting them. And I shut the book and I thought, triple my chances? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and so I got out a piece of paper and I wrote down 10 things I wanted. I said, I want the perfect husband and father for me and my kids. A new wardrobe, all my bills paid off, a new car, house in White Hills, a uh, college degree, a hot air balloon ride. <laughs> That's why I just like to have fun sometimes. And a trip to Hawaii. There were 10 things on the list. I wrote them down. Then I folded the paper up and I never thought about it or looked at it again. Four years later, I was newlywed and I was packing to go to Hawaii. And I came across this piece of paper. And do you know, I had all nine of the things, and the tenth thing was go to Hawaii I was packing for. Mm, 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 Even the hot air balloon ride happened. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> all I did was write it down. Mm -hmm. That Even that is a seed. Yep. yep. And it's, the way life works is by laws. Yeah. And once you get a grip on this, in life can become a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. You responded to the knowledge. You read that book mm -hmm. and you responded to the knowledge. And what, what we are getting here this week is knowledge about something, the thing that we've been praying for. We've been asking for answers. We've been asking for tools. We've been, you know, you know, we've been sewing, but we didn't know how mm -hmm. to sew. But we've been asking God why. And now we have the knowledge. And when we act on it, you acted yeah. on the simple, you followed a simple mm -hmm. instruction. It, but it was kind of fun, but you know what else? Mm. I had like no money. I made $700 the first year I was single and I had three little children. It was really hard. I even, I always rate my eyes when I talk about it because it was so hard. But um, I sewed and I sewed and I sewed my way right out. But do you know that Judy who did that? And I'm gonna say that Judy because she wasn't born again and I am, so I'm a new creation. That Judy who did all that sewing and studying to be, graduate Michigan State, summa cum laude, and sew and do, do her job for free and sew all of her money, she didn't get any of the benefit. Mm. She lived like a pauper. She did it for me. Mm. I'm the wow. future self. Ooh. I'm the future self. Mm. That little girl did all of that for. Mmm. Isn't that beautiful? It makes me want to cry. Mm. <laughs> it does. I don't know why, but it's just... She did all that thinking about her future, and in the moment, she wasn't getting any benefit from it. She was losing. Mm. But look at the harvest. Mm. Do you know I'm living in the harvest that she sowed for? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. She sowed for the... She sowed the one marshmallow. And I got the bag. Wow. And I said to God, God, it just doesn't seem fair. Mm. Can you just go back and give her? <laughs> <laughs> Can you just make her life a little easier mm. and give her even a little bit of what I have now? And God said, Jude, I can't because if I would, she would stop reaching. Mm. And I just, I'm so grateful that she, in her pain, thought about her future. Mm. And I was as down as out as you could get. Mm. And so, I'm just telling you, you don't have any excuse. <laughs> <laughs> in the sweetest way, just anybody can say it. where you are, you know, and just do what you can.
today <laughs> for that future you. Mm. And your future self will thank you. Wow. That's right. That's right. Wow. There's all kinds of ways to do it, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Wow. Just start sewing. Just start sewing. Right. Don't don't Look, complicate it. Right. That's right. Don't try to find an A, B, C, D. Just do it. Just test God. That's right. <coughs> Just test him and prove him. That's right. Just test him and prove him. That that's where we are now. That's right. We've wasted enough time. God's redeeming time. That's right. But we don't need to waste any more time. Yeah. That's right. Wow. 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 Up we're sewing. Thank yeah. you so much. You guys. I'm telling you, you're still going to be here in 10 years, and you're going to be sorry if you don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, do you want to talk about tithing? Yeah. Yep. That's I want you it. to. It's your turn to talk. You know, I don't know that we have a lot to say. The main thing about tithing is that we want to, you know, there's different types of giving, and tithing is one of them. But what tithing, tithing is doing is, is it's establishing your covenant with God. Mm -hmm. And he is going to rebuke the devourer. So you, tithing has nothing to do with upward giving, has nothing to do with alms, it has nothing to do with any of this. I, I like to put things just for myself in the natural. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna own this home and not have insurance on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have my car and not have my car insured in mm -hmm. case it gets in an accident. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what tithing is. Tithing is my insurance policy on our wealth mm -hmm. because it says wow. God will rebuke the devourer. He won't be mocked. We know that. Mm. And that's his law. So why wouldn't I tithe? Wow. It's, it's my insurance policy on my wealth. Do you remember what so made good. you start tithing? Do you remember? Do you, you have like a story or a testimony about it? Yeah, you did. I made you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it took me a while to come to it because I did. I, that wasn't, a lot of people come to it right off the bat, and I didn't come to it right off the bat. No, I had to understand it. I had to read about it. I had to learn about it mm -hmm. and really get my head around it. Mm -hmm. But as I see, but as I, I like to take the biblical principles and put them in the natural, and that's how I would put that in the natural. Mm -hmm. That is an insurance policy mm -hmm. that he will rebuke the devourer for me. So... I don't have to stay up nights. I don't have to worry. I don't have to do those things because I know that I'm a tither mm -hmm. and that he's out there protecting my money. That's right. Wow. That, it's a promise. It's a promise. It's a promise. It's the only time in the Bible he says, test me in this. Right. See for yourself. Wow. There's tithers' rights. Wow. You know? And one of them is that the devourer will be rebuked. But when I was a brand new baby Christian, I didn't have a revelation of tithing. And the church I came out of didn't really teach it. We would just mm -hmm. put like a $10 bill in or a 20. Mm -hmm. And we thought we were doing good. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then I heard Pastor Dave teach on it. And I was like, oh, you're supposed to give 10%? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know that. So I would write out 10%. But then if I missed a week, if you I didn't would, go. Yeah, if I was up north or missed church, I just wouldn't tithe that week. And I didn't know. I thought it was like if you go out to dinner, then you pay. <laughs> and if you don't go out to dinner, you don't have to pay. <laughs> and then I saw this verse, and it said, if you withhold the tithe, you have to pay it plus 20%. And I went, Ugh! And I looked in my checkbook, and I found all the weeks that we had missed church, and I made all those tithe checks out plus 20 percent it kind of hurt because it was added a lot to my bill and i purposed in my heart i'm never doing that again and i've been a tither ever since and for me it didn't come hard because i always wanted to please god but for me it was when i got the revelation of it that it became joyful actually joyful to give my tithe mm -hmm. when pastor dave would say it's offering time our whole church would cheer he did wow. a great job yes. of teaching us that yeah. giving is gain. Yeah, that, that's just it. That's that's where, that's probably where we've got to start adjusting our thermostat. Yes. Where we say, yeah, the the tithe isn't for the church. Mm -hmm. It's for me. Yes. Upward. Oh, that's good. That's good. Say that. The tithe isn't for the church. It's for me. It's for me. Woo! And that's a revelation. Up, upward myself. giving isn't for the person I give it to. Mm. 
it's for me. Mm. And until we start get, until we really get a hold of the idea that that is for me, mm. that is not money that's going to the, you know, that's for God's going to protect that money. I'm going to show my obedience in, mm-hmm. in handling my finances that way. Um, but those things are for me. Yeah. And and I think to begin with, a lot of us think, what? Well, well, how much money does the church need? Mm. It's not that. Right. It isn't that at all. Right. It's it's are we are we following the biblical laws that mm-hmm. are out there? Absolutely. And are we in alignment? And I and I would like to be in, in his covenant. You know, I want to yeah. be in covenant with what he's doing. Right. Because I know he will protect me through all. You do it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But it's but these things it's it, you you come off like oh that 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 person's so wonderful because they're tithing. Quite but, frankly, I'm doing it because I'm selfish. Mm-hmm. I want Me my too. things. <laughs> I want my things protected. Yeah, I yeah. want their devour protected. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not some righteous, pi- you know, pious, you know. Right. It's a little selfish why I tithe. Yeah. I want protection. Yeah. But that's what God said it's for. If you come into covenant with Him, and it's like a little tiny kid with a giant dad. That's right. right. That's right. Standing yeah. behind you. That's you know, right. And it's really sad for those who really struggle or and are challenged with that. And I know some people on the other side of the screen, I, I'm not foolish enough to believe that every person on the other side of the screen always already understands that. But you're you're some of you and I'm just gonna go ahead and just speak right now into the lives of those of you who are still struggling with that and, and let you know that um you know the, it's the enemy that comes to convince you that you don't have enough to do it. But you have to come to the understanding that it's not yours anyway. That's right. It's not yours anyway. And if you really look at the grand scheme of things, even with that added to the 90% that's yours, you still don't have enough anyway. So why would you put yourself in a worse position rather than trust the God that you say, you say, I'm saved. You say, I believe God, you, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. Why not trust God? <laughs> Giving God the 10th is saying, I trust him 100%. Right. That's when, when, when you get into that point. And you know, I don't think I've shared this with y'all, but you know, when I, I was a single mom for even for most of the time that I was married, I was always carrying yeah. everything financially. I never, made tithing optional. When there was not enough, but tithing was never an optional thing. It had to happen. I didn't know how things was working out. I had no idea, but at the, you talked about that insurance policy. Yeah. As a tither, it didn't make sense. The circumstances I was living in with what I was going through at the time, how I could still function and live the way that we were living, how I could pay a mortgage and the money I was bringing in was not even enough for the mortgage, how I could pay an auto payment and the money was not even enough for anything that I was doing, but the tithing, as you explained, which that revelation got me today when you brought it, that it was insurance. It was insurance insurance to cover everything that we need. And so here, even, I can even remember, I shared this story, when I was sitting in church one day, and we're talking about giving as well, as well, but I'm a tither, so I'm protected. I don't have enough for my bills or anything. And I'm sitting in church one day, and the pastor got up and said, you know, we have a family member that's in need, and we have to help our family, and we're gonna take an additional offering for this family member that's in need. And they started, and, and I had, I think, I think I had like ten dollars. That was the gas that I had for my car. Ten dollars. I was like, okay, it's our family. God's gonna provide. He always provides me. I just went and got the little ten dollars out, put it in the offering basket, and going on and on, on and on. And he went on and on. And we're going home from church, and the pastor runs me down, and he says, "You're that family. Aww. You're that family Ooh. that we took this for, and that was what I needed for that month. Every single wow. month." God would supernaturally provide for everything our household needed. And I shared with you, not just what we needed, we even got to go on vacations, like real vacations. God cared about everything that we cared about because we were willing, and not just me, because I taught my children as well to tithe. 
and it, our household was going to be blessed. I didn't know how it was working out. All I knew was to follow what it says that I was supposed to do, and God was never going to let me go. I had the insurance. I was paying the right insurance policy. That's right. right. And that's well in my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. You I have health insurance. When you talk about this and you say, you know, some people out there aren't maybe tithing the way they need to or, or mm -hmm. all that jazz, I just want to encourage you to say, I'm that guy. Mm -hmm. I struggled with it too, mm -hmm. and I, I it, it wasn't an easy thing to come to. Mm -hmm. Judy came to it like this, mm -hmm. just like boom, one day, and that was that. Yeah. Not me. So the fact that if you struggle with it, don't beat yourself up about no. it. No, no, no. Start reading more scripture yes. about it. Yes. Educate yourself a little more. Try to understand what's in it for you. And what he's trying to do is get you something. Mm -hmm. He is not trying to take no. anything from you. That's good. And I don't care how much money you have or don't have, a lot of us have a lack mentality. Mm -hmm. And that is a lack mentality. Yeah. I don't have enough to pay the tithe. Yeah. Or if I do, I won't be able to do X. Mm -hmm. What he's trying to do is get something in mm -hmm. our hands. Yes. We're going to stand before him one day, and it's all going to become crystal clear. And you're mm -hmm. going to go... Oh, darn it. <laughs> you know, I do. I think I, I worry about that. Yes. Because yes. it's going to be very, very clear. He's trying to get something to us. He's not trying to take anything from yeah. us. So just read about it. Study it. Don't beat yourself up about no. it. No, no, you're no. Not, you're not a bad person. Mm -hmm. You just haven't gotten there yet, and it took me a while to get there. Yeah. It's so a I, revelation, I sympathize. don't you think? It's a revelation. And you I, know, and I sympathize. It means the time means 10. So out of every dollar you make, you give... 10 cents to God. It's that simple. I sympathize with anybody that struggles with it. Absolutely. Because I get it. Because I yeah. did too. There's a period in my life that I did. Absolutely. So I get that. So just hang in there. Read about it. Yeah. We can give you things to read about it, but just try to flip your thermostat and realize he's not taking, he's trying to get me something. Yeah. yeah. You're just going to have to do it by faith. You know, mm -hmm. Pastor Dave would say, I'm going to put a challenge out. Anybody? who isn't tithing and would like to start tithing for one year. If you want your tithe back at the end of the one year, you don't see a change in your life, we'll refund it. Yeah, he used to, used to stand up on, on Sundays and say, anybody that tries it for a year and thinks that they're worse off for tithing, I'll refund their tithe to them for the year. Wow. Never wow. ever returned anybody's yeah, money. No, right? Yeah, yeah. no, right. You, yeah, you exactly. know, when, um, so John wasn't born again yet, but I was born again, and I was tithing off of my job, and I was giving like 60% of my income trying to close the gap, because I knew he was making way more money than me, and but he didn't want to tithe any because he wasn't even born again. That was the least of his worries, you know? And so um, I said to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to keep my job until my husband gets this revelation. But when he does get it, can I please quit my job? <laughs> and then when John started tithing, I quit my job and I haven't really worked since. And, um, but I wanted to make sure we were covered. It was really important to me. And uh, I, it's just, okay, so people can say certain things to me and I'll think to myself, you're not a tither. Because people that say things like, Every time I get ahead, something happens. Not a tither, because people who tie, my friends who tie, they always say, my stuff lasts way longer than it even is supposed to. Or I'm always getting like little surprises or just at the right time. Mm -hmm. And um, so people who tie, there are benefits. They always talk about, they have different language than people mm -hmm. who don't tie. Oh, and the that's true. Is an insurance policy. That's mm -hmm. true. Right? That's very true. Yep. Absolutely. The things that people say are very telling mm -hmm. to where they are in their mentality. Yeah. And if you pay attention, even to your own words that you might not be realizing, mm -hmm. our scarcity mentality. Yeah. yeah. And I don't care. There's a great interview by Will, by Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And Will Smith is worth I don't know what. And he talks about how he has a poverty mentality. Mm. It's fascinating. Yeah. And he's working really hard on it because he doesn't want to pass it on to his children. But he lays awake at night. Worried mm. about what he going has broke. and mm. how's, how is it going to be taken from him. Wow. And how is he going to lose it and all this jazz. 
and that's the poverty mentality. Yeah. That's the scarcity yeah. mentality. And you, when the more he talks about it, and you listen to it, and you understand it. Especially if you've lived it yourself a little bit, and you've been freed by it from yeah. it. It's it's. I don't care how much money you have. We can all suffer from it. Right. And um, it's just interesting. Right. Exactly. And you know, I love your your testimony of you know just not being there, but you know really having to put something in like like I just needed something and I love how God you know God really has some compassion for us. Oh God. God, thank, God, thank God really does have some okay. Yeah. Like, you know Thank goodness. John. John. Right. John. <laughs> okay. All right, John. Okay. Right. You know, and he uh. really does. And so I love that you shared that because you know I I personally um had um it was I guess you could say even prideful about the fact that I didn't struggle with tithing mm -hmm. and I actually used to like I can't even believe people struggle with tithing <laughs> and God really had to really had to let me know check you he had to check me there to understand that people come from different backgrounds people are exposed to different things so people That's are right. going to come to revelation in a different way. You That's can't right. make them get it, no. but they will come to revelation, a revelation in a different way. But, yeah. you know, open your heart. If your heart is open, God will send you the, the right seed of revelation to hit you right yeah. where it needs to happen. And, and and I love that, you know, it's, it's, it's a, I was trying to close the gap, so I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep giving all the way what I'm, what I'm earning and, and, and trying to close this gap. But I love the fact that, you know, many uh, spouses actually have people who reach out to me for ministry and ask yeah. me questions about that when a spouse is not tithing mm -hmm. and what do I do? And this is, you, don't get caught up in that. Yeah. Do your part with what you can. Turn and it, pray. That's and right. turn it loose. Yes. God will take yes. it. It's God's job to change your partner. It's not yours. That, right. There you do go. Do what you need to do. And then get out of the way mm -hmm. because he will do it. Yes. He did it for he did it for us. Yes. yes. I'll tell you what happened. It's a yeah. kind of a cute story. <laughs> um, so John wasn't born again. I was, and I love Mount Hope, and I was involved in all these ministries there. And I was like a kid in the candy store, you know. And I was like so in love with Jesus, and and I was getting all this validation there, <laughs> and it was really good for me. And John, he would go, and nobody knew him. He didn't like that. And he said to me one day, you know, oh, I'm gonna need, I need to back up. So I was praying this one day, and I said, God, where is our harvest? Because I've been giving like 60% of my income, and I wasn't seeing anything. And he said, well, Judy, your harvest is coming in, but it's getting caught up in thorns because of strife in the home. And I said, and he said, um, I want you to stop arguing with John about being born again. I want you to just love him and agree with him. Don't disagree with him anymore. And he said, I only gave you one job when you married John. Love him. Mm -hmm. He said, I promise you, if you do the loving, I'll do the changing. So I said, okay, God, I promise. And then, it wasn't two days later, he came home from work and he was kind of in a bad mood. And he said, me? <laughs> Just one time. Just one time. <laughs> and he said, you know that church, Mount Hope? I'm the man of the house, and I think I should get to pick the church we attend. And it's not going to be that one. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I said, oh. And then I thought, mm, I just promised God I would agree with him. And so I said, I, I, okay, John, I agree. I said, you pray about it and we'll go wherever God tells you. Then I ran into the closet and I said, God, oh, I forgot this other part. God said to me when I was telling him, you know, my husband's a heathen and, and he said, I only gave you one job, love him. And he said, Judy, I wanna hit John in the face with a pie, but you won't get out of his face and I can't get a clear shot. So he said, just stop <laughs> fighting with him <laughs> and agree. So I was like, okay, I agree, John. You pray about it and we'll go wherever God tells you. So then I ran in the closet and said, God, bring on the pie. And I was like, did you hear him? He's talking crazy. I know you wouldn't send him to one place and me another. 
so I'm putting this in your hands and I'm just going to stay sweet. <laughs> and so then that Sunday in church, John happened to be sitting on the end. Our church seats 3,000 people. And Pastor Dave was up preaching and he was just talking about the Lord God is, you know, the goodness of God and the love of God and all just about God. And he stopped and he got quiet. And he said, okay. And he shut his Bible. And everyone's like going like, what's happening right now? <laughs> and he just left the platform in the middle of his sermon. <laughs> and he started walking up the aisle right toward John and the whole church is watching. And he gets to John and he takes his Bible and he puts his arm around John and he puts his Bible in John's lap. And he goes, hey John, look at this verse right here. Isn't it good? And John looked up at him, and the whole church is silent. And he goes, it is good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> and he goes, it is, isn't it? And he shut his Bible, and he went back up and kept preaching. It was the strangest thing. I didn't tell a soul what I had talked about with God. Not a soul. Anyway, all day John kept saying, see, Jude, Pastor Dave is my friend. Mm. He's my friend, too. He's not just your friend. Oh. And he never talked about leaving again mm. and God hit him with a love pie that's yes. what he needed he just needed a little love and I'm always hitting him over the head with the Bible all the time telling him he had to get born again he was a heathen and he was possibly going to hell <laughs> <laughs> and none of it works you can't get into strife with your spouse over anything because mm. it's not worth it because what happens is the Holy Spirit doesn't like strife mm. and he splits Mm. Now, it's just you and your spouse in some kind of weird power struggle, and there are demons all around you circling like vultures and squealing oh. with delight. Mm. And the atmosphere is charged with mm. demon activity. Yuck. So, <laughs> if you want to keep your house in unity, you can't get into strife over any of this. If your spouse doesn't tithe yet, just you tithe off your income. So. So after um, this, I was giving the 60% one day, God said to me, Judy you and John are at an impasse. You can't really tithe for him. Mm. So he said, I want you to stop doing that. And I want you to take the money, the other 50%. <laughs> and I want you to start giving it to Pastor Dave and Mary Jo personally every month. Mm. He said, tell them, please receive this. Don't even send a thank you note and thank you for being my pastor. It's like three little lines. And so I started doing that every month and that was probably in the year, probably 2000. And at, what's this, 21? I've been giving to him every month for 21 years. Mm. And um, that's why we're so blessed. I'm convinced of it. There's a level of blessing that comes when you give to your man again. Come on. So let, let's, um, let's cover alms real quick yes this is kind of i think it's important because we say some things that could easily get lost or, or misconstrued or yes. twisted and i want to talk about this just for a minute okay yeah so alms is giving to the poor yeah. mm -hmm. and we believe and we know that it's a biblical principle to give to the poor yes it's the only type of giving that isn't called seed it's not seed because it's giving to man it's not giving to god mm. you you if you use that as seed you're, you're putting your seed on rocky ground. Mm -hmm. There is not, that is not fertile soil, mm -hmm. right? And so one of my favorite scriptures for this, because I, I, I struggled with this for quite a while, is Leviticus uh, 23, 22. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your field and do not mm -hmm. pick up what the harvesters drop. Leave it for the poor and foreigners that live among you. And here's what I love about it. it says, do not pick it up. Mm. Leave it for the poor. My God. It doesn't even say give it to the poor. It says leave it it's for it. the yeah, poor. Do God doesn't it. says do all the work. You pick it and everything. Then hand it to them. Nope. Right. Leave it for them to pick. Mm. It's very, very interesting. It really yeah. freed me up on a lot of things because I think a lot of us get tied up saying we need to help these people. Well, we do. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways to do it, but some of it isn't the right way to do it. You know, mm -hmm. lazy and poor are also two different things. That's right. Because the Bible says the lazy man won't eat. 
Mm -hmm. But he does want you to help the poor, but he wants them to pick it because mm -hmm. they're not lazy. They're just poor. So we never use our seed for the poor. We do give to the poor, mm -hmm. but is it, it's in a manner of a loan to the, to the Lord, and the Lord will repay us for mm -hmm. that loan. Mm -hmm. But we, didn't, we never count that seed. We never name it. We do it in um, private. Mm -hmm. yep. that, that's yep. just you know mm -hmm. we don't we don't announce what we're doing mm -hmm. and that's just what we believe because there's a lot of people that are giving to the poor and giving to the poor and then saying I don't understand where's my harvest yeah, where's don't my name thing? that seed Jesus says don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when you give to the poor because you don't want to be connected to it mm -hmm. you oh, would never you don't want to be good. connected to that that's you don't good. want a covenant connection with poverty. Come on. Right. Oh, that's so good. Right? Oh, you would never ever take your hard-earned seed and stand in a parking lot and dump it on the parking lot, mm -hmm. hoping that it would grow. Mm -hmm. right, it's not it going to. Mm -hmm. It's not fertile soil. So you understand that. And again, everybody gets twisted by us thinking that we're trying to say, so don't ever give to the poor. No, nobody it's, thinks that. It's what you're doing and it's how you do it. Mm -hmm. It's not your seed. And you don't name it, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. You need to give for this. You need to give upward. That's what's important. So that's why it's important to understand the different types of giving. Mm -hmm. Tithe, tithe is to me, it's an insurance policy. Yeah. It's protecting everything I have. Yeah. I'm under God's will. I'm in covenant with Him, and it's protecting everything. Yeah. Yes. Giving to the poor, He's asked me to do that as a loan, and He will repay me. Yes. But that's not where I put my seed. No, and guess what? When you just keep handing them things, mm -hmm. do you know you can't beg your way out mm -hmm. of poverty? I've never heard one wow. wealthy person say they begged their way wow. out. Wow. Or Pastor, you have to sow your way out. Pastor, that's the law. Mm -hmm. Or Pastor Dave, through his tenure, gave 40 millions to missions. Mm -hmm. Amazing, right? Wow. But one of the things that's interesting is because missions are building schools mm -hmm. so kids can teach themselves yeah. and teach and teach the next round and change generations yeah. and they're raising and they're teaching people the bible and getting people born again and say they're not just handing you know money to the poor right and hoping that he was he wanted to fund that because he saw that as changing the future changing directions yes. changing generations yeah and i like that I like that too. Yeah. He's that, is, that that was that was good seed, right? Yes, there. that absolutely. was good seed. Yes, yes. So it's um so we want to be real clear on that, just so you understand that. Because I think there's a lot of people who say, Well, I give I give to the poor constantly and that's all I do, and I don't see a harvest from yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna see a harvest from it. No, if you're all you're sowing is downward, your life's gonna go down. Your finances will go down because you're connected to the wrong power. Right. You want to be connected to an anointing. Yes, yes. An anointing, somebody that you want to emulate. Mm. So so tonight, how about if we um, how about if we give you some homework? Let's do it. I, I really would I really think that tonight you guys should be thinking and tomorrow about where would you like to go? Would you like wow, would true. you like it, it would you like health? your family do you want your finances increased do you want that and you need to take if you this is a very very important thing we say that we got from pastor dave if you think it ink it yeah write it down don't just think it ink what it. would you like to see different in your life number two and then start jotting down where could you put seed in the ground mm -hmm. for that because it's fine to talk about this and hear about it and then next week is we're all apart and nothing's happening. So That's I want to challenge time. you guys tonight to say, there's an action item here. What would you like to see different in your life? What's the seed you could use? Because it could be money, it could be an act of service, it could be a lot of different things. And um, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. How are you gonna move forward to yeah. change it? Yeah. And how are you gonna put this little test to work? Yeah. And what we'd really like to do is have a couple of you or all of you or any of you write into us and say this yes. is what I came up with yeah because let me tell you Please. something when people do this it blows our mind yes there's people like my wife that go uh, I want a baby so I'm gonna give gifts to pregnant women right <laughs> or stuff like that those the, the people come up with brilliant ideas yeah. of how to sow seed yeah. 
into the right fertile ground for whatever their need is. Yeah. So I guess I'd like to leave. I, I guess I'd like to challenge you. I like with that. that. I like that. Did you do you hear that? You're gonna really think about where you want to go, where you want to go, who you want to emulate, and then you have to consider who or what represents that. I like that. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. So we're not even telling you, so don't just say, oh, I'm an all, oh, I don't want to be like them. No, be very thoughtful. The Lord will tell you who to give be to. Be very thoughtful about this. Yeah, the Lord will tell you. Yes, write it down and then determine what your seed looks like. He gave you different options. That's it's right. not always money. Right. Like he says, acts of service. Might be something you have, something somebody else needs whatever it is maybe you can make a connection with the, they they need it you know somebody that they should know that could help them get over there's all kinds the of door. ways and you my open the door goodness. right goodness. there's all kinds so of creative good. things to do so um it doesn't do any good to hear this unless we act absolutely so that would be my action item for tonight think about yes. one simple oh, thing so good. don't so overthink good. it and Jot it down, and if you're willing to share it with us, yeah. we won't even use your name, Yeah. but we'd love to hear some of your ideas of what you'd like to see different yep. and happen, because God's going to give you great ideas because God wants his laws used. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you show a willingness to apply his law, he's going to help you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. This is yeah. good. Yeah. This is good. I like that. Yeah, there's like a verse that. in the Bible that says, consider the birds of the air. They don't sow. Neither do they reap, mm. and they have nothing to store in barns. Mm. Yet your heavenly Father is merciful. He feeds them. Mm. So he's saying, consider them, and don't be like them. That's right. Wow. Right? You can sow, and you can reap, and you have more to store in barns. Start looking around and see how many birds that you know. Come on. Right? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of that, birds in the body a, of Christ. There's a lot yep. of birds in the body yes. of Christ. Amen. Yeah. That are flying around. Like that. Yeah. They are. <laughs> they don't have any storehouses that aren't, you know. And so we're not going to be, for those of us that haven't lived, that have lived that way, we're all done as of now. Absolutely. Right? We're going to change. We're going to sew up to go up. Absolutely. And, re and just keep remembering, it's no different than tithing. We're doing this for us. Mm -hmm. Not for... If when we give mm -hmm. this person something that has yep. nothing to do with them, this yep. is all about a. This is a bit. Quite frankly, upward giving is a very selfish act, mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. it's a very selfish act, and that's yep. okay. Yep. Right. Absolutely, it's, nothing wrong with it. It's a tool. It's his law. Let's apply it. Yeah. Yeah. And it positions us. Oh yeah. What comes of it? It positions us to do what God has called us to do. That's it all goes back to putting ourselves in the position to be able to do what God calls us to do. You cannot do what the kingdom needs done from a place of poverty. Of lack. It cannot yeah. happen. You cannot do it from a place of lack. So while it seems like, and, and God's not going to have us do all this for the kingdom and not let it fall on us too. That's we right. get to enjoy it as we're doing what we get to do for the kingdom based on what we have done. We've made a decision to be intentional, to take the knowledge that we have, to take the revelation that we have, act on it. Then it comes back to us. It is it is all for the purpose of flowing through us. My, my alarm does like to let that, that's the, I mean, That's absolutely yes. the truth. We, are a, we have to view ourselves as a distribution house. Yeah. It is supposed to flow into us and flow out yes. of us. And the better the job we do, the bigger our distribution house grows. Wow. And we, we we reap the benefit of having a bigger distribution house. Mm. My God, man. But we also, you know, we can do all kinds of things with mm. it. It's very exciting when you start thinking that. None of this is mine. Mm. None of it. It all happens through him, because mm. of him. So I have a little something extra, too. When you write down, like, who do I want to give to? And say, Lord, I'm praying for seed. You said you give seed to the sower. Give me some seed to do this transaction. Mm. And you just watch and wait and see what happens. Mm. And when stuff happens, we want to hear about it. Mm. We, we want to hear about it. Yeah, we want we, we it. 
You don't know how it encourages us, so we want to hear about it. Wow, this has been so good. So good. Night four. Night four. It doesn't even seem like we've been sitting here like an hour talking about this stuff each night. <laughs> but it, honestly, this is incredible. This is what we need. We've been waiting for this. It's here. Let's enjoy what God has brought to us. And I'm telling you, your life is getting ready to change. It's not going to be the same after this. If you act upon the things that we are learning this week, your life cannot be the same. It goes against who God is for you to do, follow these principles and it not work for you. So I'm excited. Make sure you let us know when you've made a commitment, what it is, if you wanna send it in to the inbox for accountability and then you move forward with doing it, make sure you come back and let us know what you've done, what's happened as a result of it. But as we're getting ready to go, I said we got a big announcement. So oh, we yeah. gotta I share. It. We have a huge, huge announcement. Thank you for sticking around for it. Listen, there is an incredible, incredible experience coming up that you do not want to miss. I'm gonna let Judy share about what they're going to be doing, what God has placed on their heart to do. And I'm telling you, get ready because there's an opportunity coming for you for direct impartation. So go ahead and share what we have. October 15th and 16th in Lansing, Michigan. And the, the, the flyer is gonna be posted after. We're doing a total prosperity seminar and it's us and pastor dave and cheryl and harry salem and laura and amanda kokenauer are the our little worshipers and yolanda is going to help us with it too and we're all going to spend two days imparting into you and your life will change you know i need to get my eyes on on you mm. we need to get our eyes on you we need to touch you because there's it's the difference between listening to a CD and going to a concert. It's so much more when it saturates mm -hmm. you when you're actually there. Mm -hmm. And we want to saturate you with God's anointing for wealth. You know, it's time. It's time for the great wealth transfer. Mm -hmm. And God's looking for that remnant who will receive it. And Pastor Dave has the anointing to be a financial deliverer. And John and I, we do too. And we're going to all lay hands on you at the end. We're going to have a glorious impartation ceremony. We're going to spend two days pouring into you. We're going to worship together. What are you going to talk about? We're going to talk about total prosperity. We're going to talk a little bit about relationships. We're going to talk about health. And we're going to talk about wealth. That's right. And at the end, you're going to leave change with and, a new anointing. And, and I think the other thing that's important is that you, if, you're, if you get this revelation, you need to be around other people that get this revelation. That's, right. that's why it's important because you're going to meet people that begin to think like you and, and you need to feed each other. Because the world will trample on you. The world will tell you this is crazy. You need to be around people that think like this. Yeah. Because it will fuel you. It will energize you. You'll, make, you'll probably make friends that you have for life. Oh, yeah. There's no question about it. Just like we have. Yeah. There's no question Absolutely. about that. So we really would encourage you to come. And we'd love to see you. And we'd love to, like Judy says, meet you. And eyeball to eyeball. And, yeah. and, and we want the very best. Yes. Did I mention that Pastor Dave Williams? Pastor Dave Williams is there. going to be there. He's going to lay hands on everyone oh, and on. impart. For that alone yeah. is worth the price of admission. Come on. Just if you did nothing but come for that last half hour. Come on. It'd be worth it. Come on. She is absolutely because, right. Because, you know, sometimes you got to invest in yourself. You're sowing into all these other things. Yep. Sow into your own future. That's right. Do something for you. That's right. For that right. little future you. That's right. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Do something for you for that future you. I'm telling you, yeah. this is going to be an incredible event. I'm going to tell you. Up until today, I already knew about the event before because we've been talking about it. I I, I was always going to attend. Like yes, let, let let me be clear. I was always coming. I was always already set to be here. I only got asked to do moderation today. That's right. I am still going to be an attendee at this event because one of the things that I know is that I'm not yet where God says I'm going to be. So I'm looking forward to the impartation as well. Like Judy has just said, invest in yourself. Let me tell you, 
I have done all sorts of online classes, online events, and they're amazing. You're getting blessed on the other side of this screen, but there is something about being in the room. They're just mm -hmm. get me in the room That's with right. the anointing that is it's flowing. It's different. It is just different. So when there's an opportunity to get in the room, I'm telling you, get in the room. My team has been sharing the link in the comments, totallifeprosperity.eventbrite.com. The event is already live. More information is going to be added or whatever, but it's enough there for you to do what you need to do. I'm telling you, go ahead, dive in, get ready to do it. There's going to be something special for the people that registers in the first 24 hours. We're going to be telling you about that tomorrow night. We didn't get to collaborate. I know. Exactly. I was so just thinking we'll we tell them about that. Really good giveaway. But we got some really good giveaways. So those who register within the first 24 hours, I'm telling you, you and it's up to 10 that is going to get certain special privileges so make sure you go ahead and get started and we're going to be looking at all of that but i'm telling you get here to lansing michigan october 15th and 16th it's going to be a friday evening and all day saturday i am waiting for the pour to happen it is going to be amazing so make your plans right now not yeah not p-o-o-r p-o-u-r <laughs> i'm waiting for the poor to happen on october 15th and 16th so we look forward to it we'll be talking about it the rest of this week we'll be reminding you but go ahead and get in in that first 24 hours we are looking for you to be in the room with us it's going to be absolutely amazing and did you and i didn't even tell you i told you when i read pastor dave's book the first time i was like I want to, I think I need to meet him. Yeah. I said, I think I need to be in his space. And I don't feel like that about everybody, but I was like, I feel like I need to be in this person's space and look what the Lord has done. He's yeah. going to be in the room October 15th and 16th. And I want you to be in the room with us. But for tonight, be blessed. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same time. It's been amazing. We've enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Be blessed tonight and do your homework and message us. Oh, yeah. Let us know what it is that you are going to sow into. Amen. And let us know when the harvest starts coming in as well. Be blessed.